What's up, everyone? I'm your female otaku, and I'm here to give you my first impressions on the winter 2021 anime season, or as I like to call it, Winter 2020 Extended. There's a lot of sequels, a lot of anime, and a lot of time on my hands, so let's jump right in. Sci-fi. Lesbians. Guns. Lesbians. College. Lesbians. No, this isn't your hub history, it's Other Side Picnic. It's not often we get a gay anime that isn't a slice-of-life romance in high school, so this intrigued me right off the bat. You have the college gun-wielding gays travel to the Upside Down to collect money and find a long-lost friend. The other world is pretty fascinating. And your protagonists are ghost-busting lesbians, so I say it's worth the watch. A lot of people say they don't understand what's going on in Wonder Egg Priority, but I can give you the rundown. <gasps> you follow Coraline Jones down the rabbit hole into Wonderland where she has to save a bunch of people who have previously died in order to rescue her deceased friend. The weird thing is that she can't get injured in Mementos, but any injury she could have had end up bleeding out into the real world? Huh? Not only is there a time limit to rescue each person, but you also have to kill the thing that caused their trauma and eventual death in the first place. Money the fuck? There's a lot going on and the anime is super artsy and weird. But if you like that sort of thing, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Also, is it just me or do the character designs look like something straight out of a KyoAni? series. Hey, hey, just thought I'd interrupt to remind you to please turn on notifications. It's been two years since the algorithm turned against me and my views are lower than ever. Commenting and sharing also helps, but turning on notifications will definitely make sure that my content doesn't go unnoticed by you. I work hard on my videos and you guys subscribe to see them, so it only makes sense, right? Alright, now let's get on with the show. What's going on in the romance department? Well, there's the fan favorite, Hormia. It's just your beautiful modern tale about a girl who actually has to do chores and an e-boy. It has the right amount of lovable romance cliches as well as a few minor twists. Nothing crazy, but definitely something I look forward to every week. Bottom tier character Tomozaki is another basic romance about the loser dude who fails at life. But the cool popular girl takes him in and reforms him into a new dude. Yep, just your classic Taming of the Shrew, Pygmalion, 10 Things I Hate About You scenario with a dash of harem. What? How else are we supposed to know it's an anime? Let's see, what's going on in the sequel corner? Oh my god! ReZero, Dr. Stone, The Promised Neverland, Laid Back Camp, Cells at Work, and even more that I'm not even watching! I don't think we've ever had this many sequels air in one season until now. And we still got the continuations from last season, like Jujutsu Kaisen and Higurashi Go! Obviously, I'm recommending all of these sequels, but the one sequel that definitely earns itself a bit of a segment is Attack on Titan, the final season. Note, there will be spoilers, so if you're not caught up to the anime, then please skip to the following timestamp. Trust me, you don't want to spoil yourself. Now that we know everything that's been going on behind the scenes, seeing the perspective from the Marlands was pretty jarring to say the least. But I love my boy Reiner, so I stuck it out. Shit really hit the fan once we saw Aaron and the others on the mainland. In this arc, our main cast that we've known since the beginning are now the antagonists. I started to question myself when Aaron began attacking innocent people, including children. Like, yeah, fuck these guys and their beliefs. But damn. The way they're portrayed in this arc makes it seem that what they're doing is... wrong. For the first minute or so, then I cheered, FUCK IT UP BOYS! It's still hard to believe that this is the true reality of their situation, but it's about damn time Aaron and the gang take back what's rightfully theirs, and that is basic human rights. Going back to what's new, we've got Skate Infinity. From the creators of Free and Banana Fish, I expected to see a bunch of hot guys with a dash of angst and depression. Ooh. But the first episode was way better than it should have been. Sure, you still got the pretty guys, but damn, the animation gave me chills. The skateboard competitions are not only hype as fuck, but absolutely stunning to watch. From the fluidity to the cinematography, it's hard not to let your jaw drop. I really hope we get this level of quality throughout the series. And I still don't doubt that we'll get some Boys With Feelings episodes down the road. But for now, Skate Infinity is a blast. You know, I've been hearing that Cells at Work Code Black is dark, but I had no idea how dark it really was until now. I don't mean dark as in, yo, this is messed up, but dark as in depressing. Going from the fun and lighthearted energy from the original Cells at Work to this just makes me kind of down. I'm still enjoying the anime, and it's really making me appreciate my healthy body. But damn, how am I not supposed to be down when seeing this adorable red blood cell face off against things he has no control over? And he's, he's just trying to do his job, man! There's only so much that he can do! And the titties... The, t the titties aren't good enough. They're not... 
shorter video than usual, but that's all I'm watching, guys. Let me know what series you're watching this season. Any you recommend? I'd like to give a very special shout out to Sarah Hogan for donating to my Patreon. If you'd like a very special shout out in the next video, stream, or what have you, then please click on the Patreon link in the description to donate, as well as links to my social media. I also want to say thank you to Jesh for editing this video. You're the best. I'm your female otaku, sayonara.